irrelevant to the MOS, this applies to all 18 series guys on ODAs, is you are in the fight. All right? Whether you are the captain, whether you are the warrant, whether you're the fox, you are a member of that fight. All right, we are back in the team room, and today we're gonna do a rundown of the different Special Forces MOSs. For those of you that don't speak military, MOS is an acronym, of course, because we're in the Army, which stands for Military Occupational Specialty, which is a really fancy way, long-winded way of saying your job. So. What do you do in the Army? Are you a mechanic? Are you a supply? Admin? Are you a Green Beret? That's your MOS. So the different Special Forces MOSs that you'll see on an SF ODA. Another acronym, Special Forces Operational Detachment Alpha. More commonly referred to as simply ODA. You'll often hear all of these MOSs grouped under the phrase 18 series, right? The reason why it's 18 series is because each of these MOSs begins with the number 18. So MOSs in the Army, they begin with a number and then there's a letter. So for Green Berets, 18 is the number associated with being a Green Beret. We're gonna just go in order and then I'll kind of talk about different options and ways to navigate how to get yourself into some of these positions. So the first position is the 18 Alpha, which is the team leader. That is usually filled by a captain in rank, so a traditional officer. The captain, the team leader, is, is the leader of the team. That guy is the face of that group. That guy is the one that assumes the risk. That guy is the one that decides what we are doing. Second to that, next in line, is the 18 Zulu, which is the team sergeant position. So this is the senior enlisted leader, so an enlisted individual. Typically it's held by a sergeant first class or a master sergeant. So an E7 or an E8 will hold the position of team sergeant. This guy is the boss, all right? Every stud on the team, aside from the captain and the warrant officer, which we'll talk about in a second, they all work for the team sergeant, all right? He runs the team. He provides leadership and guidance to the other NCOs, the other non-commissioned officers on the team in order to figure out how the team will execute the what that the captain has decided on. So team leader is the what. The team sergeant figures out the how. Next we have the 180 Alpha MOS and that is the warrant officer the Special Forces Warrant Officer, which is what I am. This is typically held by a W01 or a CW2. W01 is the rank, it just stands for Warrant Officer 1, which is the lowest level of Warrant Officer. And then CW2 is short for Chief Warrant Officer 2. This guy is the advisor, or as I prefer to, to call it, the Consul Yeti, like Tom Hagen in The Godfather. What we do, what SF warrant officers do, is provide advice more than anything else. So you can look at the team sergeant as being the tactical expert of that team and the warrant officer as the technical expert of that team. Next, we have the 18 Bravo, which I used to be before I transitioned over to Warrant. 18 Bravos are your Special Forces weapons sergeants. So these guys 
prioritize these guys these guys expertise is within weapons and tactics so weapons both foreign domestic knowing how they knowing how they function knowing how to troubleshoot them knowing how to fix them and also knowing how to employ them within combat operations and 18 bravos are also the tactics advisors of that team so it's at this point that i'll pause because every every guy on the team every nco on the team has a staff function that's associated with that mos so the 18 bravos the 18 bravos staff function is what we refer to as the s3 which is your operations section so your bravo section or your 18 bravo as an individual is responsible for facilitating training and overall the execution of ops. Your 18 Charlie, these are your engineers, special forces engineer sergeants. These guys specialize in building things and then blowing them up. So there are demolitions experts. Their staff function is that of our S4, which is our supply section. So the Charlie section, or the 18 Charlie as an individual, is responsible for maintaining our supply. So accountability of property, the acquisition of property, getting rid of property. They spend quite a bit of time doing inventories and going over hand receipts, paperwork, what piece of equipment is where, who it belongs to. That's an 18 Charlie staff function. Next is your 18 Delta, which are your medics. Their staff function is that of S1, which is the admin section of the Army. So any paperwork that needs to get handled, any administrative task, we then have the 18 Echo, which is your Special Forces Communication Sergeant, your combo guys. These guys' staff function is the S6, which is the combo staff, staff function. That one's pretty easy to marry up. So all of our networking, all of our digital and communications infrastructure, we're talking both radios, computers, and any other means of comms, your AT Echo section is the other guys that handle that. And then lastly, we have the 18 Fox. These are your Intel guys. Their staff function is S2, which is the staff function for intelligence. The breakdown per team. So an SFODA is comprised of 12 individuals. You have one captain, you have one warrant officer, you have one 18 Zulu team sergeant, and then you have two Bravos, two Charlies, two Deltas, two Echoes, and one 18 Fox. That's where you make up the 12. That number 12 doesn't just come out of thin air. The reason why ODAs are broken down into 12 individuals is so you can split the team in half and conduct split team operations. That is why we are structured the way we are. As you prepare for selection, as you find yourself in the Q course, you have really just the five options of MOSs to choose initially. You either come in as an 18 Alpha, which is a captain, which is really a unique route to take. Or if you come in as an enlisted guy, you can be a Bravo, Charlie, Delta, or Echo. That's it. You get qualified in the Special Forces Qualification course as one of those five MOSs. Once you get to the team and you're operating as a Green Beret on an ODA, is at that point, that you either earn your position as an 18 Zulu, as a team sergeant, which usually takes the guy, I don't know, five years, six years, depending, to earn the rank and earn the experience and earn the expertise to take over the team as the team sergeant. You can then also request to become an 18 Fox after the fact, after you're on the team as one of the other MOSs, that is usually a leadership heavy decision. The detachment leadership will start to key in on individuals that would make a good 18 Fox because it's an entire shift 
from that individual's current MOS to a new one. I get asked this quite frequently, which MOS is best suited to become an 18 Fox? It doesn't matter. It does not matter if you were Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo. It's totally irrelevant. It's really more based off of the intellectual capacity and the interest in making that shift from a combo guy, for example, to an Intel guy. And then lastly is the request to transition to become a warrant officer. Also something that you cannot do just out of the gate when you, when you enter the Army or when you come into SF. Um, and similar to Fox, that's done through requesting it and then going through a process, a board process of review to determine if you would make a good warrant officer candidate. You get given the approval and then you go to school, you, you learn that initial baseline and then you take over a team as an assistant detachment commander, which is what uh, SF warrant officers really do. Irrelevant to the MOS, this applies to all 18 series guys on ODAs, is you are in the fight. All right? Whether you are the captain, whether you are the warrant, whether you're the fox, you are a member of that fight. You do all of the same things that everybody else does when it comes to being on operations. And I bring this up because oftentimes, particularly with the 18 Foxes, the Intel guys, there's this assumption made that they're retracted, that they're away from the combat because they've become Intel nerds. That is absolutely not the case. Uh, same thing with your captain, same thing with your warrants. When you, when you roll with a crew of 12, every single gun is necessary to be in the fight. That's the breakdown. Choose your journey. Either way, I look forward to seeing you on this side of the game.